<clears throat> Hello and welcome to Module 11, the Hierarchical Networks. Uh, so please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you're ready, when we're done. Keep saying when we're ready. Anyway, uh, so we are going to talk about designing of a LAN or a WAN in general. So uh, let's begin. And <clears throat> First thing we want to talk about is the need to scale. Scale means to be able to expand easily without um, any problems. Now, you you got organizations that require um, converged networks, which means you know you have now data, voice, and video all coming on the same medium. You got critical applications that are needed to be transferred uh, between one LAN to another, or within inside the local area network. You have you know, diverse business needs and centralized administrative control. All of those you have to think about when you are designing your local area network. All right, so Cisco has something called the borderless switched network. So please write the first um, sentence. The Cisco borderless network is a network architecture that connect anyone, anywhere, anytime, on any device, securely, reliable, reliable and seamlessly. Now, the whole idea is to be able to connect wired, wireless, over the internet, over a private wire. Cisco will be able to do all of that for you, regardless of where you are, what kind of device you have. If you want to connect to a large campus or you just want peer-to-peer, -peer, no matter how you want to be connected, there are Cisco devices out there that will enable you to configure them and uh, be able to connect in a very secured manner. All right, now there are two different types of uh, um, <clears throat> designs. There's the three tier layer design or a two tier layer design. Um, if you have a small network within the hundreds, you probably want to use a two tier. A three tier is a very for a very large network. And as you can see, they are always doubled. And that's the reason we're done for redundancy. Now we have the core layer that where everything connects to. And from the core layer and a three layer, um, a three tier layer design, from the core layer, then you send your data to a distributed device, such as layer three switch. And from there you go to the access layer. This is where you your devices or your hosts actually connects to. All right. So uh, this could be, for example, if you have a very, very huge campus. The distribution layer will be per department, you know, for, um, per department. So, for example, um, you got the humanity department, and then at the access, you can have English, history, blah, 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 depending on which network. Or you can have, for example, the engineering and technical, uh, another distribution switch for them. They'll be able to distribute to the different department from computer science to networking to engineering and so on so it all depends and then they all connect to the core layer and then you can have another distribution for non-academics and another distribution for human resources because in each of those uh there's multiple departments all right so it's a hierarchical method because it's like a tree and it's much easier to grow so for example if all you needed is another uh access layer a new department you just plug it in and that will not compromise any security or performance of any of the adjacent um, networks if you don't have, if you have a very small network you can go directly from the core to the access like we've been doing for the last couple of semesters right and uh you can have and you can create your vlans and everything else right there all right, so the three layers, please write these down. You have the access layer, the distribution, and the core layer. The access layer is the one that provides network access to the users directly. Then you got the distribution layer. That's the one that implements routing quality of service, land security. If you have an email server, for example, for your whole, dis for the whole distribution area, you put it at the distribution layer. Where do you place people, by the way? It all depends on what kind of work do they do. If 80% of the time you are at a specific land, you do your work in that specific land, then you should be placed in that in that VLAN, all right, and so on. Uh, 
The core layer is where everything aggregates to from the outside world. So the core layer has to be devices that are extremely fast because the, everything from the distribution layer all the way it goes up to the core before they uh, before they are placed to the outside world. All right, so here's a typical three-tier three -tier layer campus where you have the core, a three-layer switch maybe, or a router, and then you got the distribution layer, right? It goes to this, these are buildings, and in each building you have multiple access layers. Excuse me, if you have one building, you can have the internet and the WAN, and then you got one distribution layer, and then goes all the way to the axis because you can create all your VLANs here, right? VLANs or however you want. The distribution layer should not be populated with any users. Its main objective is to move data around as quickly as possible to all the other access layer devices. All right, so you want to have redundancies, as we said earlier. So please make sure that no matter what you do, is you always have redundancies, right? So at the core layer and at the distribution layer, because you want to eliminate the, um, the central point of failure. Okay. Scalable network means you have to be able to uh, increase without any problems. What it, you have to be able to expand without any issues, right? So please write that down. Scalability is a term for a network that can grow without losing availability and reliability. All right. How do you do that? You got to make sure you have redundancies, multiple links, scalable routing protocols, and wireless. We've talked about that in previous courses, right? STP and OSPF allows you to do that, redundancy and multiple links. And OSPF is the routing protocol that we, that is, you know, it can easily, uh, it is a very scalable, almost unlimited. It uses areas to do that. Uh, multiple links, we can use multiple links to achieve better bandwidth using Ethernet, uh, Ether channel, I mean. And of course, we talked about the wireless con uh, uh, connectivity. Uh, that's when we use the, um, the wireless controller or the hat. To, con to interconnect or to control and configure multiple access points. All right, so you want to have redundancy. STP could be running on all the switches. So these are the backbone switches that allow to eliminate the um, to eliminate the central point of failure. Okay, so these should not be populated. Okay, these are just in case you know this let. This fails, there's always another way to get to the actual server farm. That's where all your servers are, right? So STP will automatically run and find the best path to the destination. And if any link or switch fails, there should be another path to the destination, right? So if this link breaks, S5 will send the data this way instead. All right, um, a well-designed, now, uh, network controls traffic and limits the size of failures. Okay, so we talked about that. Make sure you eliminate the central point of failure. Um, not only STP, we also did redundant um, gateways, right? Using the HSRP. Uh, what else? Okay, increase bandwidth. If you have unused channels, uh, unused ports, Aggregate them together using Ether channel to increase um, trunk performance. All right, we did the access, the wireless using access point, using, and you can use the um, wireless controller to have multiple access, uh, to control and configure multiple access points in a LAN. And that gives you more flexibility, of course. It's easier to expand when you have the wireless. Then you have wireless, uh, then you have the OSPF, like I said earlier. You know, everything has to connect to the backbone area zero. You know, this is, makes it very easy to expand and uh, they can always reroute themselves. You know, OSPF is very good when it's in, you know, inside. If you don't have a lot of, I don't, I don't, most people don't even, especially if you have a very large campus, you have, 
you know you use the multi-axis but if you if your company grows you can easily do areas right create areas but they all have to connect to the backbone all right let's take a look at some hardware switches switch platforms so you have um here's the different types of switches we have the meraki cloud managed switches which cisco just purchased recently uh, you got the nexus this is for the infrastructure networks very expensive of course this is where the isps uses uh then you got the <clears throat> the form factors there is the fixed ones um and there is the module ones and there's the stackable ones that you have all right so write this down port density okay port density is how many ports do you need how many ports do you need you you figure out the number of users you have and um always multiply it by three just make sure for scalability especially if you have fixed switches okay if you've got module ones so please write that down fixed switches can support that many that means you cannot be expanded you need to purchase another switch you have to use trunking and all that but module ones you can actually just put in the switches and just increase the port density easily in that way uh, forwarding rates is the please write this down forwarding rates defines the processing capability of a switch by rating and how much data can you spit out so we got a hundred this is where the most expensive this is where you can spend a lot of your money on the switch port forwarding rates uh, you can get up to 100 gigabits per second one of the reasons fiber is not being deployed as much is because of the uh they very expensive port rate uh forwarding rates on their ports they can cost up to 100 probably even more dollars per per port then you got power over ethernet please write that down power over ethernet the switch port will be able to supply power to the uh to an iphone for example then you got the layer three switches right to interconnect devices in a LAN, right so please write that down too right uh to, to interconnect vlans right without having to use a router all right please take um a snapshot of this this is what you need to consider when you are purchasing a switch either for layer for the axis or the distribution or even at the core layer all right when it comes to uh router hardware you know when, when it comes to the router uh 2900 does everything that you need to do um these are the four the 4000 series are the a little bit more expensive ones uh the 9000 is more for isps um then you got the rugged ones the smaller one this is probably a please write this down the 900 series routers are uh for branch offices so if this is a typical router that you would purchase you can configure it the same old way we're doing it um, these are the least expensive and then you got the um which ones i'm talking about not the 5000 then you got this one the 800 industrial integrated service router this is more for uh designed for harsh environments so you can drop and beat it up and it still go up and running anyway um this is it it's really a small quick chapter but um take every all the notes that you got uh that i asked you to take and please submit them and i'll see you on module 12.